Hey everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about the very real possibility that the bottom is not yet in for Bitcoin and therefore the crypto market. And then if that's the case, what is a realistic expectation of where that bottom could form should we lose current levels? If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter, where we put out regular updates about our risk indicators and more. So what I want to talk about today is the possibility of further downside from here. Now, part of the reason why I want to talk about this is that some recent things have happened that have made me think that further downside has become now more realistic than it even was just a week ago. And one of the main points or one of the main new pieces of data that I've been looking at that has me cautious right now is the fact that the May CPI actually came out even higher than the March CPI, which had been the highest CPI print in this recent run-up in inflation. In fact, we put in a 40-year high on the CPI inflation print earlier this week. Now, why does that have me concerned? Well, it has me concerned because it invalidates, at least for now, some of the narratives that had been pushing more towards the possibility of a pivot by the Fed in a more short-term uh, pro possibility. You know, the Fed pivoting by September, for example. And really what that narrative had been was that March was the peak of inflation. Inflation was going to continue down from there. That would take pressure off the Fed from having to continue heightening, heightening rates, uh, take pressure off of them from being as aggressive with their quantitative tightening, which could then give breathing room for risk assets to be able to start moving back to the upside. But really with this uh, CPI print here, that kind of runs very much against that narrative. The fact that we actually put in a higher CPI print suggests that you know, March wasn't the peak that, you know, even if May is the peak, you know, the Fed has said, and a lot of people believe that, you know, it's going to require many months of consecutive drawdowns in inflation for the Fed to even consider starting to take their foot off of kind of the hawkish gas pedal. And so we've kind of just reset that clock here. So that means that the Fed, you know, pivoting dovish anytime in the near term, bar some other extreme circumstances that might come out seem fairly unlikely and so then now the market is pivoting to price in a, a, the likelihood of a more hawkish fed for a while or at least that's a probability and in fact we've really seen this with the stock market so you can just see how the stock market reacted to the cpi print just falling off a cliff and it seems very likely in my opinion that we're going to set in new lows here at least, at least quite possible quite plausible we'll go in and set new lows and should we do that you know, in my opinion, it'd be pretty remarkable for Bitcoin to be able to hold in this kind of range that's been in for a while if we continue to see risk assets across the board take a nosedive. And so, you know, if we are going to see some downside, where might we be looking for? You know, what's kind of the, the lookout below level that we should be looking at? Now, there are different uh, metrics that different people will look at to say what they think is the likely bottom for Bitcoin or the kind of the lowest they think is possible for Bitcoin. You know, a lot of people talk about the 200 week moving average, which I've just added here, this green line here, as being the absolute bottom of, of uh, Bitcoin bear markets. And the reason they say that is that if you just look back at previous bear markets, you know, the bottom of 2018 and then the bottom of the 2015 bear market, they have more or less found their bottom at the 200 week moving average. So a lot of people say that they expect this to kind of be the bottom if Bitcoin goes back down to it. It's currently sitting at just over 22K. Now, of course, that's possible that Bitcoin could fall, uh, fall to that level and stop there. But as with anything, I don't like to be too um, certain about any of those kind of things or to, to think that there's any guarantee that that would have to be the bottom. So another level that people look for is the 300 week moving average. And people point to this one because it's more or less where we found our bottom during the March 2020 crash down here. And that's currently sitting at 16.5K. So that could also be a place where maybe we could find a bottom. But again, maybe that's not necessarily as low as we could go or where we'd have to find a bottom. So another metric that I want to talk about that less people talk about this as in terms of a bottoming point, but I think it's, it's just as reasonable to look at this and just as valid as those different moving averages. And that's to take a look at the long-term holder realized price and just examine where we found macro bottoms, you know, bear market bottoms relative to it in the past. And what I've, I've talked about this metric before on the channel, 
talking about it here again because I think it's important to look at. So uh, if you're not familiar with the long ter- long-term holder realized price, long-term holders are basically holders uh, are individuals or coins that have been held for more than generally 155 days is the cutoff that is used. And so these are basically people who have been holding Bitcoin for longer than that period. And then realized price is basically their cost basis. So it's basically, you know, the coin changed hands, they bought it, and then that became their cost basis. You know, the, the price at which the Bitcoin moved into their wallet is the realized price, that's their cost basis. And that's what this is tracking. Just on average, kind of the entire cohort of long-term holders, what is their average cost basis? And that's what this red line is here that I'm showing you. What you'll notice is that in prior bear markets, so if we consider the drawdown back in 20, uh, or 2012 as being the first kind of bear market, you know, we dipped below the long-term holder realized price here. We dipped below it again before we found our bottom in the 2015 bear market. We dipped below it again in 2018 to find the bottom of that bear market. And so, you know, there's no guarantee that that historical pattern has to play out again, that we have to dip down below it. But if we do, I think it's a useful exercise to consider where might we then find the price if we have a drawdown below it, similar to what we've seen in the past. And so I did the math to just calculate the uh, percent drawdown at each of these different levels. And essentially at this first one, there was about an 18% drawdown to the absolute bottom from the real the long-term holder realized price level. There's about a 42%, a little less than 42% drawdown from the realized price, long-term holder realized price to the bottom of this bear market. And then here, there was about a um, 29% drawdown from the realized, long-term holder realized price here down to the bottom of the bear market here. And what then by observing those percent drawdowns, you can just do some more math to say, okay, if the long-term holder realized price here is around 20K, where would drawdowns within that range, so kind of the low end of the range being like around 18%, high end of the range being at around 42%, where would that put Bitcoin's price if we saw a similar drawdown within that range again below current levels? In fact, that would actually give us a Bitcoin price of around 16.4K to around 11.7K if we were to drop down below the, the long-term holder realized price like we have in previous bear markets and then found our bottom somewhere in the range set by these. So somewhere in between kind of the, the lowest drawdown, which is here, and the largest drawdown that was here. And again, that range would be between 16.4K and 11.7K. So the 16.4K number is quite interesting, actually, because that coincides with the 300-day moving average of where it stands right now at around 16.5. So those are very similar to each other. But then this type of analysis here would actually suggest that it would be not, not surprising from Bitcoin's history for us to drop down all the way down to closer to 11, 12K region and that would again be just historical patterns playing out again we've seen that before it would literally just be us seeing this exact same thing again that would happen here and that's why i do consider it as being a possible realistic place that we could end up because bitcoin has literally done that before doesn't mean it has to do it again doesn't mean we even have to drop below the long-term holder realized price but we're trying to think about how bad things can get that's one benchmark that we can look at that you know the 11 to 12k range you know, that, that would not be historically surprising. It would not be a drawdown from the realized price that's larger than we've seen in the past. So I think that's a, a, an area to keep an eye on. Now, again, things might have to get especially bad for us to get there. But certainly, you know, if the stock market keeps on crashing like crazy and there's more issues that arise, we, I think we have to keep everything on the table. We have to keep an open mind and think about these things and then just wait what we think the relative probability is of that kind of outcome actually unfolding. Now, another metric that we can look at that also gives us a good idea of where we might find support should we have to dip down to those lower levels is just looking at the distribution of realized prices in Bitcoin. So basically how many coins have their cost bases at different price levels. So the x-axis here is Bitcoin is basically price level. So it's going all the way from zero up to the all-time high, 69K. And then we're just well, on the bars here, you're seeing where are the coins, what volume of coins have their cost basis at those levels. Now I've excluded coins that are younger than basically long-term holders, just because you know short-term holders tend to move their coins around a lot. And so it's not necessarily all that useful to look at this as potential levels of support because short-term holders just tend to kind of be moving in and out and their cost bases will fluctuate quite rapidly. So I've just zoomed out 
out here. And so what you can see is that really, we're just looking up below where we are right now, you know, starting at 27K, that's really the first place where there's a decent amount of, of cost basis on chain. Really, we're looking at around 20K before we start getting any amount of distribution. And then in fact, you know, again, going back to what we we're talking about before, some confluence, it's really the 11 to 12K range where we see that big wall of cost basis exists, just really show up. And then you might expect that there's a possibility of strong support here, that as these people have been holding Bitcoin for so long, see price get back to it, they might be willing to step in to defend their cost basis, seeing that as being a particular value zone, given the fact you know that Bitcoin exploded nearly 6X above where they had bought in, or in fact, actually, yeah, a little less than 6X from where they had bought in at these levels. Not to say that people wouldn't necessarily step in before then, right? You know, we saw that even back here. One of the things we noted but when we found that bottom at around 25K, that there wasn't really a whole lot of on-chain cost basis at the time down there. So from this perspective, there wasn't any reason to expect us to catch at least a local bottom at 25K, but yet we did. So it wouldn't mean that we'd have to get down here, but should we go down to that kind of scenario, this is just one more confluent level that could suggest the 11 to 12K range could act as strong support if things get bad enough, enough for us to get back down there. So, you know, this is obviously all kind of a, a bearish prospect here. This is talking about kind of the worst case scenario. And, you know, to be clear, this doesn't have to happen. You know, we don't have to go back and touch or retest the 200 week moving average. We don't have to go back and test the 300 week moving average. We don't need to dip below the long term holder realized price, etc. But the possibility is certainly there. And I think Right now, there's just not a whole lot of hopeful signs that the macro environment is going to change all that much. So unless Bitcoin and crypto can start really decoupling from the broader macro space and hold price levels while the stock market tanks, for example, then you know I, I personally think that the downs, downside in risk, risk assets generally, you know, the stock market is quite real, given that we haven't seen the factors that are really driving that correction, such as increasing inflation and the Fed's response to it, um, showing any signs of lightening up. I think we just have to keep in mind where things could go if some of these worst case scenario, well, you know, worst case scenario is hard to define. The worst case scenario is that everything just goes to zero, obviously. But that's, you know, in my opinion, very, and extremely unlikely to the point of not worth talking about. So the worst case scenario that seems more realistic, I think it's, it's important to keep those in mind and take a look at where we are. Now, one quick update I did also want to give a couple of uh, days ago, I put out a video talking about our trend confidence indicators, one of our indicators here at the channel. And then I had, I had said that maybe there was some hope for at least the short term uh, relief rally at the levels that we were at because we had closed up in the green. If you're not familiar with this indicator, green is bullish, red is bearish. And then essentially, when if, you, if you're in kind of what we're in right now, this kind of sideways, slightly up action, when you see the TCI flip green, that can be a sign of strength. This is starting to look more like an uptrend than a downtrend. But then the CPI kind of intervened that, you know, we we're able to hold up in the green for a couple days. CPI print happened and that just tanked us back down below. And so just one more reason why I think, you know, downside is quite plausible. You know, we haven't, you know, the TCI has flipped back to being bearish. Price action has been bearish after it flipped red. I'm not seeing any, any short term signs for that to be um, relieving. And the, the TCI is currently looking at a price level of around a little above 29K as being that dividing line. We're currently trading, you know, below that here at um, 28.4K. And so should we see a breakdown from here, you know, certainly retesting these lows are potentially lower could happen. How long it would take for that to happen, who knows? But I did just want to make a video just talking about if we do see that kind of thing happening, what are some price levels we can look at? Certainly these 200 and 300 week moving averages for ones to look at, but I did want to talk about this analysis based on the long-term term holder realized price. I haven't really seen other people talking about that. I think it gives, it gives us some other interesting and frankly realistic, again, we've seen it in the past with Bitcoin, levels to watch for should things really start breaking down from here. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter, but a lot of updates about indicators and more over there.